How's it going everyone? It's Red Effect. Today we will be answering one controversial question. Was T80 really a failure? In order to get the answer, we have to start from the beginning. In 1971, new tank was required to replace T64 and T72 tanks. Leningrad factory offered turbine powered object 225 and diesel powered object 226. Chelyabinsk factory offered object 780 and Kharkov offered T-74. It was decided that new tank will have the gas turbine engine. The trials in 1973 showed improved mobility in comparison to T-64, but engines failed to reach the objective of 500 operating hours. They barely reached 300. Trials in 1974 and 1975 confirmed that fuel consumption was high and reliability still low. The T-80 prototype might have been rejected, but after Grachko's death in April 1976, Dmitry Ustinov was appointed in his place as Minister of Defense. The tank was suddenly accepted under the army designation T-80, because Ustinov was a big supporter of gas turbine engines and saw them as the future. Original T-80 was very similar to older T-64A, but it was more expensive. 480,000 compared to 143,000 rubles. New T-64B could even fire the Cobra tube-launched ATGM. As a result, production of original T-80 was short-lived. Only around 200 were built. Leningrad implemented new features from T-64B to T-80 and designated the tank T-80B. The T-80B became most common production version of T-80 and the first version to be deployed in Germany starting in 1981. In 1982 Lebanon war, Israelis used explosive reactive armor for the first time which was designed to defeat high explosive anti-tank projectiles. This sparked interest to adopt ERA on the Soviet tanks which they have been developing since 1950s. The result was Contact 1, which was lighter and more effective than the Israeli Blazer. Contact began to be fitted to Soviet tanks in 1983. New T-80B with Contact 1 entered production in 1985 under designation T-80BV, where suffix V stands for Vzrivnoi or Explosive. In 1985, new tank entered production the T-80U. It featured new armor, new fire control system. It was refined to launch new reflex anti-tank guided missile and was also fitted with new Contact 5 ERA, which could degrade the penetration of both armor piercing, fin stabilized discarding Sabot and high explosive anti-tank projectiles. Although the T-80U was undoubtedly the best Soviet tank of its day, it came at a high price. It was concluded that the T-80U was about 10% more effective than T-72B, but cost nearly three times as much. 824,000 rubles compared to 280,000 rubles. Soviet tanks received a bad reputation after the poor performance of chief export models of T-72 in the hands of Iraqi army in 1991 Gulf War. However, the T-80U and T-72B represented a fundamentally different capability, having substantially better armor and better ammunition. U.S. Army live fire tests against ex-Soviet tanks obtained in the 1990s concluded that NATO would have had a very hard time penetrating the advanced armor arrays deployed on the T-80U and T-72B. Likewise, their ammunition was substantially more potent than the expert rounds exported to Iraq. In late 1980s, the T-80U started getting new 1000 horsepower diesel engine, which would drastically decrease the price of the vehicle. But USSR collapsed and only few were made, where most ended up in Ukraine, which would later be renamed to T-84, which is still in use in Ukraine. Now, let's look at the stats of T-80. 
First, we will look at T80B and then the more modern T80U. The T80B is powered by 1000 horsepower SG1000 gas turbine engine, which gives T80B power to weight ratio of 23.5 horsepower per ton and maximum speed of 70 km per hour. It is armed with 125mm 2A46 2 smoothbore gun with an autoloading system. It can fire AP VSDS, heat, and high explosive fragmentation projectiles, as well as Cobra ATGM. It is also armed with PKT coaxial machine gun and NSVT anti aircraft machine gun. The T-80B is fitted with a composite armor called Combination K, which incorporated a cavity in the cast steel armor of the turret, front, and ultra porcelain ceramic rods in a matrix. Combination K offers protection equivalent to about 550 mm of steel in the turret front. The glacis plate uses a different type of laminate armor, consisting of an outer layer of about 80 mm of steel armor, backed by 105 mm of glass reinforced plastic, followed by a 20 mm steel armor base offering protection equivalent to over 500 mm of steel, including its steep slope. Crew consists of three members, commander, gunner and driver. Commander is stationed on the right side of the turret. He has access to his commander station, which he can use to communicate with other tank commanders and search and designate targets for the gunner. He can rotate the turret towards the target at any time. Gunner is stationed on the left side of the turret. He has access to one G42 farm control system. This is a look through the gunner site. I will put the list of what is marked by the numbers, so if you are interested you can pause the video and check everything. Gunner could also choose which ammunition type to load with an autoloader by turning the switch in front of him. Driver has access to the periscopes at the top of the front glazes. Now let's talk about the ATU. It is powered by 1250 horsepower GDT 1250 gas turbine engine which gives the ATU power to weight ratio of 27.2 horsepower per ton and maximum speed of 70 km per hour. It's armed with 125mm 2A46M1 smoothbore gun as well as outloading system. It can fire armor piercing fin stabilized discarding cybot, high explosive anti-tank and high explosive fragmentation projectiles as well as the Reflex ATGM. It is also armed with PKT coaxial machine gun and NSVT anti-aircraft machine gun. But the difference is that NSVT on T-80U is remotely controlled by the commander. T-80U uses more expensive semi-active field cell armor in the cavity, consisting of two rows of polymer field cells, backed by a steel plate and another layer of resin. When the cells were penetrated by the shaped charge jet, shock waves reverberated in the semi-liquid filler in the cells, degrading the penetrator. It is also equipped with Contact 5 explosive reactive armor on the front glazes, also front, top and the sides of the turret, as well as on the side of the hull. Contact 5 and the new turret armor provided an unprecedented amount of protection for the T-80U, equivalent to 780 mm against armor piercing thing stabilized discarding sabot, and 1320 mm against high explosive anti-tank projectiles. Crew also consists of three members, but Gunner has access to new 1G46-2 fire control system, and both Gunner and Commander now have access to new thermal imaging system called Agava. Now, to answer the main question of this video. Is T-80 really a failure? You might have seen one of many articles which describe T-80 as failure. If you have, you might have also seen that the main reason they take is a poor performance in Chechen war, or the assault on Grozny, to be more precise. But the real truth is, it is not T-80's fault, or even its design. When Chechen war started, there were no T-80s nearby, 
so they had to be transported to aid Russian troops. But mainly old T-80B and T-80BV were transported from far away, and many of those T-80BV tanks had no explosive fuel inside their area, because most probably a guy who was taking care of it, T-80, decided to take valuable explosive out and sell it. Because, remember, Chechen war took place when USSR collapsed, which meant that the economy was really, really bad in Russia. People had trouble surviving, and on top of that, they had to wage war with Chechenia. So when T-80s arrived, they were just given to troops who never saw them before, and were just operating T-72 tanks. They had no idea T-80 had gas turbine engine, so they kept the engine running, on idle, therefore consuming a lot of their fuel supplies. The assault on Grozny was a rushed decision and T-80 tank crews were sent without any plan or, ta or tactic of assault. Not even with infantry support. They were practically sent to die. When they entered Grozny, they found themselves getting hit from top floors of the buildings by RPGs. Many of the now Chechen fighters were former Soviet soldiers, so they were pretty aware of weaknesses of Soviet tanks. They shot T-80s on the top of the engine compartment from the top, where explosion would ignite the ammo rack and then blow up the tank. But even then, T-80 could withstand up to 10 hits before finally getting destroyed. Another reason they take is how T-80 is no longer in production because of how bad it is. But the truth is also different. T-80 is a very expensive tank, mainly because it uses gas turbine engine. So, as said previously in the video, they started making new ones with the diesel engines. Also, new T-90 tank was about to hit the scene. So they had to decide which tank will take the role as the main battle tank of Russian army. The decision had to be made between T-80 UD and T-90. Now, there are a couple of reasons why T-80 wasn't chosen. Ukraine got to keep a lot of them, so there would be competition in the export market between Russia and Ukraine. Another reason is that the turret of T-90 at the time was the one of T-72B, which had better effective thickness than the one of T-80. And also politics played part in the final decision. So, the final answer to the question is, the T-80 cannot be regarded as a failure. It had some flaws, yes, but it was also first to feature top-of-the-line fire control system and active protection system, which is still in use in Russian military in improved form, of course. It also showed that gas turbine engines were not the way to go for Russian military. That's it, thanks for watching. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, feel free to correct me in the comment section down below. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.